Welcome everyone, my name is Akayami and I'm a solo explorer. I love traveling, nature, knowledge, and healthy overall well-being. This channel is a way for me to document and share a piece of my experience with you. Thank you for being here and engaging, subscribing, and liking my videos. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm getting myself together so tomorrow I can start getting my vehicle really set up for colder weather. Not this Arctic thing that's going on right now, but colder weather, because it's like, this is Georgia, and Georgia is usually not as cold, but it's like, it was, I think it was 13 degrees or 14 degrees when I woke up this morning, and I'm like, I ain't going to get in that car today. No, I ain't. But I'm getting everything prepared now so I can get out there and do some camping. So I'm going to show y'all some of the stuff that I've got going on. And then tomorrow, I don't think it's going to be as cold. Then tomorrow I can try to um, put up the things that I'm fixing up for my car tonight. Today I'm just going to show you what tips to use for heating your vehicle if you do not want to use gas. And so they're really brief, they're very efficient, and they're practical. So let me go ahead and show you what I have going on. Staying warm in a small car comes with so many different challenges, which is why there are times where I will not um, go camping or do much traveling when the weather is cold or when it's raining like it is today because of whether or not, I don't know if I trust my vehicle's performance and I don't trust what the elements are going to do to my vehicle. So I just want to show what it's like for me to be able to stay warm in this very small vehicle when I travel or when I decide to use the vehicle to car camp. Vehicle insulation is a key and is very important. And some vehicles, of course, come with a little bit more insulation than others. My car is not very um, insulated. As far as I'm concerned, I feel every season in that vehicle. Sometimes a vehicle doesn't hold enough insulation to keep you warm or to keep you cool either way. So you have to find it with um, things like the reflectix on the windows that will help, you know, protect you inside. Um, you can also put up curtains and sometimes the blackout curtains can help to block any air that's coming through, but you can definitely supplement it with different blankets and the blankets are a great way to help lock in heat if you are able to get the vehicle warm enough and then cover yourself with the different types of blankets. And the blankets will matter a lot. The material of the blankets will really matter. So like the reflectors will reflect off the sun and keep you from being really hot as well as if you turn them around and they can keep whatever heats in the vehicle, in the vehicle. Um, it doesn't, it's not 100% foolproof, but at least it will help with whatever the weather temperature is outside. The window covers that, um, these that I had before, um, they weren't cut out perfectly but um, it is working to do what it needs to do. So I didn't want to spend no money. And I tried to look up some window covers for my model of vehicle, but I couldn't find any for that model. Most of what they had were for, you know, later model vehicles. And um, so I don't, worry about spending money on something um, when I don't have to. Now, like I said, 
it is uh, in order for me to get the covers on I just taped it at first and now I'm just sewing the corners and then I'm going to um, even out all the trim around it but I'm sewing the corners first and then I also intend on if I need to using these magnets um, to hold them on to the window if they don't stay I don't I've never had a problem with them staying before, but I just noticed that there is some metal along the rim of the window that I didn't realize was there. And so I'm gonna use these um, to help these stay on if I need if I if I need them. I don't think it's on the back of the car, that window. I don't think there was any metal that this would connect to. Um, so I'm probably gonna just make a curtain out of the excess fabric that I have um, for the back curtain. So I'm gonna make curtains. I'm gonna get this done. I'm gonna figure this thing out. My reflectors that I had in my car before, I wanted to go ahead and put fabric on the other side. So right now, this is a tacky job, but that's okay. But it's gonna get done empty way. I didn't do a very good job on my window covers. So I put up my screens that I use in the summertime, mosquito netting window covers, because that actually holds in my uh, window coverings that I made, but it still blacks out everything. I've tried to find a way to make it feel like it's nighttime when I'm in the car in the daytime. And I put up this black sort of like curtain or whatever, and I use Velcro strips. But I'm seeing already that that might be an issue because like taking it off, it seemed like it might take the Velcro that I already have on here off. Kind of trying to determine whether or not I need to get some more window things, whatever you call these <laughs> covers, and try to make it for the back window. So I'll have to do some correcting. And I'll be tweaking this a little bit more. But the reason that I'm doing this is only because it gets so dark so quickly at in the winter time. And because of that, I'm going to have to find a way to be able to entertain myself inside of this car when I can't get out or maybe even if it's raining. Time to test out this heating blanket here inside the car. I was trying to wait for it to get colder. Unfortunately, the temperature is not as cold and there's a lot of raining and storming going on. And the temperature right now inside of the vehicle is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15 degrees Celsius. So it's not that cold in here, but it would still be something where I would want to warm up in case the temperature started dropping throughout the night. So I just wanna see what this feels like inside the car. It is plugged up into the AC um, in my EB380 battery. And I'm going to turn it on and put it on low and just see how it works as far as making me cozy and warm. And the low is all I don't want to really do right now because you know what, let me put it on high. It is 1.28 p.m. in the afternoon and I want to see just how long it takes for this to get really warm before I turn it off and how much charge it will draw. So it's charged about 129 right now. 
um, it was on 99 at the time. So if I were to do this and maybe just do it for a few minutes to see just how hot it would really get, I want to see how much wattage it pulls from the battery. In the meantime, let me get under here. And matter of fact, let me turn this around so the plug is on the bottom and not under this blanket. <laughs> I don't want the cord to be wrapped up in the blanket. So I'm gonna move this cord up to the front and see just how well this thing heats. So even though I have this on high, it is it's relatively working okay. It cycles down to seven watts, all the way up to a hundred and something watts back and forth. But I am warm and cozy inside of here. But now I want to test out a heating pad to see if the heating pad will be just as sufficient for getting me warm. Now, the heating pad is just a regular old heating pad that most people have in their homes already. And um, you could, of course, just, you could put a wet rag inside of here that could, you know, give you a different type of heat. Um, but most of the time when I use this, I don't, I, I won't put wet rags in it because that heats up so hot sometimes that I feel like it's, tearing me up burning me up so i'm going to plug this in and unplug my heating blanket and see how much watts this draws and i'm just going to use a regular blanket for this so this heating pad has low medium and high on it i'm going to put it on high so i can test out exactly how fast it gets hot and how much energy it draws off of my battery. And I'm going to take my Raven's blanket and I'm going to wrap this in the Raven's blanket. It is drawing power from the EB3A and it's at 51 watts. It's drawing 51 watts off of that. And now my battery is at 91 percent it's 145 and i want to see how long it takes this to get to its highest level so that's 52 51 watts at the highest setting on here since it's getting warmer in here just from the heating pad um, of course, from the electric blanket, I would probably not even need to turn on any heat, other heating source, because my car is so small and this is leather. So I would probably have to crack the window just to avoid over uh, too much moisture in the vehicle, um, because this is this heating pad is giving off a lot of heat. As a matter of fact, <laughs> this bad boy hot. I'm turning this off, definitely. So the fact that this draws so much heat, um, it causes so much heat and it draws so little power, I would probably use this um, more than the heating blanket to warm up my bed before I go to bed because th there's no way I could sleep with this on that long. And it is just like, this is... This is it right here. I could turn it on and turn it off. Um, if it was cold when I woke up from camping, car camping, then I could turn it on, let it get really hot, and let it warm up the vehicle a little bit, and then get out of the my little sleeping area. So there you have it, everyone. If you want another way to heat things up, a heating pad or a heating blanket, could definitely work. One thing I can say is that it got a little warmer in the car just from the heating pad and the blanket. So I wouldn't even have to turn on 
the heat and this daggone thing is getting hot is like really hot now i also keep a i could keep a hat on um of course i have on a hoodie right now i have on leg warmers and sweatpants and <laughs> i have all of that stuff on right now so my own body temperature along with this and I, and I didn't turn it off let me turn it off um along with all of this right here is would be sufficient now again i don't know how well it would work in freezing temperatures but i'm not the type of person that's going to go car camping in very frigid temperatures i would go when it's something that is bearable and um yeah arctic weather that's not bearable to me and that don't make sense to me <laughs> so but yeah this is sufficient i don't have to have gas i don't need to have to um put some little heater in here that produces way too much heat i don't have to do any of that So now let's test out our little portable heater. This is an electric heater and it is a one of those thick cords, not like a regular extension cord. And this is this cord is um, good enough to deal with um, a portable heater like this. And I think they call it, uh, I think it is a 15 AWB or G or something like that that is able to deal with an electric heater like this. And this is only 350 watts. So I wanna see how well this will heat up this little car and for maybe just a few minutes. So let's test it out. The power button, it is on the back here and it does have the safety tip over feature so if it tips over it will um, turn off automatically so there is no way to gauge the temperature it just on and off so as i said this is the same cord that we use for our lawnmower leaf blower and all of that so this cord is able to deal with a 350 watt little portable heater my power bank cannot support this um, my power bank is the eb3a and i intend on leveling up to a bigger power bank if i need to now it's blowing and i do have the window crack because the cord is going outside of the car and plugged into the outdoor outlet it's so quiet it's like white noise since heat rises the best place for this little heater is on the floor of the vehicle make sure that there is space around the heater so nothing burns or catches fire or anything like that there is nothing around that and i wouldn't have anything around it um, that would cause an issue for me. And if I were sleeping in here, and more than anything, I would not even have that on to go to bed. I would just have that on just to take the chill off the, the car without turning on the car. So it's just a nush, another additional way to get warm if I needed it. I remember one time when I was in the military and I was traveling home in a vehicle and it was a small car at that time. And I remember that I don't think <laughs> that I even checked the weather because we didn't have cell phones, smartphones, the way that we have them now. And so if I'm traveling from Baltimore, Maryland, I'm traveling from Fort Lee, Virginia to Baltimore, Maryland, which is where I was going at the time, I may not think, and I was so young, I may not even think about what the weather's gonna be like in other states. Because if you gotta drive through states, you may not have any idea of what 
whether you're going to run into on your journey, whether or not it's going to, it may be raining where you are or maybe dry where you are starting from, but if you don't really know what the weather is going to be like for the states that you're going to go through, you could find yourself in a very difficult position. And that's what happened to me before. I drove from Fort Lee to Baltimore, Maryland and got caught in a snowstorm. And I pulled off and there was no place to pull off really, but um, a hotel parking lot. So I pulled off to a hotel parking lot because it was coming down so bad and the roads were getting so bad because of course the salt trucks had not got out there yet. And while I was in the parking lot, I was so stressed out because I was worried that I was going to get stuck in the snow. While we were sitting at that hotel, it got really, really crazy. And we did not, if we were to stay there, I don't know whether or not it would have been a situation where we would have been too cold because we didn't have anything prepared in the vehicle to manage that if the vehicle would have break down, if the car would have gotten too cold and it wouldn't start up. We were not prepared at all. And I was with my little brother at the time. I had him with me. So we made a decision to go ahead and get back on the road and keep driving. And the scary part of it was that there was a tractor trailer behind us and that tractor trailer was driving so fast that my little brother at the time got in the back seat and was doing this to the tractor trailer trying to get him to slow down because for us to hit our brakes it would have probably caused us to slide so again we just were not prepared to be on the road or to be stuck on the road if that were the case without anything to prepare with, like nothing to keep us warm or no jumper cables, no nothing, no phone, no anything. <laughs> So I think it's important to always remember along with all the heating sources, the blankets, the clothing and everything that you should also have something that can prepare either hot beverage or a hot meal in the vehicle because before you go to sleep you would want to, you know, heat your body up with some type of hot food. So I keep an electric kettle and I also have a container that heats up food and I also keep an electric pot um, in my vehicle as well and so I can heat up soup I could you know boil water for some tea or cocoa or coffee and I could also warm up some food in my aota um, it's like a hot logic but it's called aota but Hot logic is what most people are familiar with. But those things can give you the hot food that you need if you were to, you know, break down somewhere or if you're in cold climates and you're camping and you're traveling and you pull over to a rest stop. So that's probably a good idea. It's probably a good idea to have soup, coffee, tea, cocoa, and food that you could just warm up in the vehicle and that you could also use your electric um, items to heat them up. I would love for you, anybody that's watching this, to share your tips that you might have for anybody that's watching that and leave it in the comments because of, of course I didn't you know, cover everything in this video, but my hope is that it triggers some ideas. And so for my viewers that are watching this, I'm sure you probably have other things that people need to consider and will be helpful for them as well. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do, I would love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe.
in the meantime, everyone, good mental health, good physical health, and as always, good spiritual health. Y'all take great care.